So I divided the video into two parts. In this one we're gonna model the clothing using only cloth simulation. There's not gonna be any sculpting. Then we're gonna paint the whole thing and create the materials in the next part. As always, you can download the 3D file and real-time process videos of making this character and all the characters you see on the channel from my Gumroad and Patreon page. Check out the link in the description. Let's go. You can improvise and make your own shirt, but the more accurate way would be bringing a sewing pattern template to use as a reference. So before starting, download any template you want. First bring your character. While you're in front view, shift A. In the image, click on reference and open up the sewing template. Shift A again and add a plane this time. Rotate it 90 degrees. Go to edit mode and fit it with the length. When it reached the bend part, extrude to the bottom. Until you reach the bottom part, then select the left edge and extrude to the left and fit it with the points on the bend part. We have a round bend in the color area. So let's extrude to the top and cover the full shirt. Extrude a small face in the corner, then press Ctrl R to add a loop cut here. Now we can push this point to the inside to fix the color. It now needs way more topology, so let's add a loop cut. It's not looking that good, so let's straighten the edge. Press S to scale, X to align with the X axis, and press 0 at the end to straighten up the edge. It is that easy. Now we can add a couple of more loop cuts to fill up the mesh. It's gonna help with the cloth simulation. And for the empty part in the bottom, just press Ctrl R then scroll up the mouse to increase the amount of cuts easily. In the modifier properties, add a mirror modifier. Then go to edit mode, select the mesh and move it to the center if it's not in the center already. Once it was at the position, enable clipping to stick it to the other side. Get out of the edit mode and move it aside for now. We want to do the back side as well. And the back side is a bit different from the front. Duplicate and move it to the back side on the sewing template. Now we can go to edit mode and modify this plane to the size of the template. This way we don't need to add a new plane. Hide or delete the reference image, cause we don't need it. Now bring the plane with a bigger color to the front and the other one to the back. Then rotate it 180 degrees on the Z axis, cause we want the plane facing outside. To ensure if it's facing the right way, go to overlay settings and turn off face orientation. Inside should be red and outside should be blue. Other way around would be wrong. If it looks okay, just turn it back off. Just make sure it's right outside of the body and not interfering with the skin. To make the sleeves, just go to edit mode, press 3 to switch to face select mode and select the outer faces. Shift D to duplicate and place it on the side. Switch to poly build tool. Move the mouse outside of the face and when the edge turns blue, extrude out two faces to match up with the bottom. Then to continue, just hold control outside of the corner and drag out a face. Do that to other parts. Now for this empty space in between, just go back to select mode, select the inside edge, then press F two times to fill it up. For the cloth simulation, we need more topology. So press A to select all, then right click and subdivide to double the amount of faces on the plane. Now let's sew these different parts together so we can begin the simulation. First in the select mode, press 2 to switch to edge select mode. Hold alt and click on the edge to select the full edge and hold alt again but hold shift as well. Then click on the edge on the other side. Now that we selected both sides, right click and click on breach edge loops. After that, you can select the inner edge, then press F over and over to breach two sides together. If it doesn't look right, you probably don't have enough edges on both sides. Add loop cuts or remove edges so both have equal amount of edges. Then select bottom of the sleeves and press F again until you fully connect the front to the back. The parts that we connected are gonna be the sewing lines, but before that, let's add a loop cut. Close the edges by pressing Ctrl R. That might help with some of the problems that might occur during the simulation. Now, volume face select mode, hold Alt and click on the edges to select the full row of faces. Then holding Alt and Shift this time, do the same thing here. To add these faces to the previous ones, press X and click on only faces. Then do the same thing between the sleeves and shirt. Just select the faces and delete face only. These lines are gonna be our sewing lines. Now we want to wrap the clothing around the body and for that body needs to have collision. Select the body and in the physics properties click on collision. Then select the plane and go to physics properties again and add cloth. We want to test out the simulation. For now let's increase the quality steps. Scrolling down under shape enable sewing. Increase the max sewing number. Also increase the quality and enable self collision. Now select the model again under self body and cloth. Decrease the thickness outer number and inner number. So the cloth stick to the model even more. Now you can press a space to start the simulation. First tries are almost always not great. We can press Ctrl 1 to add one subdivision. This way simulation has more topology to work with. You can now press 
space to test out the cloth. As you can see, bottom of the t-shirt is super baggy and big. I wanted more fit. It's also way too long. So let's roll up the mask to make the proportional editing bigger and push up the vertices to make the shirt shorter. Then test it out again. You can also right click and shade it smooth. You can change the shrinking factor to get different results. In the modifier properties, you can add solidify modifier to add some thickness to the cloth so it's not just a flat surface. We can now increase the speed multiplier and quality steps to see if we can get better results. There is no right answer for this one. You just have to test out these settings to see which one works best in your case based on the type and size of the clothing you have. If you think it looks okay in the modifier properties, apply mirror modifier and cloth modifier. Suit parts are most likely will have no face. So in the edit mode, while using edge select mode, select both edges and press F to bridge. Then you can select its outer edge and press F again and again to fill out the rest easily. You need to make sure both sides have the same amount of faces so it goes correctly. To optimize it for texturing, we need to unwrap the UVs. Press 2 for edge select mode, hold alt and click on any edge on the stitches part to select the full row. We want to separate the front from the back completely, so do that for all the sides. Once you selected all of it, press U and mark seam. Then you can go to UV editing tab, press A to select all, and press U and unwrap. If you see they still stuck together, that means you haven't separated all the edges. Go over the edges again and mark seam any edges you have missed. Then select all again and UV unwrap. You can now select all of it and fit it as best as you can in the UV tile. You can hover the mouse on top of each part and press L to select it. Now let's move on to the shorts. Shift A and add a new plane. Bring it up, rotate and go to edit mode. Move it to the side, go to front view, select the upper edge and extrude. Ctrl R to add a loop cut. Add a mirror modifier and enable clipping so both sides stick together. We can add more loop cuts to shape it better. Ctrl R and roll up the mask to add more loop cuts. Then right click and subdivide until you have decent amount of topology all over the mesh. Go to the side view, shift D to duplicate and move it to the back. Rotate it 180 degrees on a Z axis. Enable face orientations to see if both sides facing outside. If it is, just disable it. Hold Alt. Click on the edge to select the whole row, then hold Shift and Alt and select the other one. Right click and bridge edge loops. Then in the face select mode, hold Alt and click on the edge on the first row to select the full row. And hold Shift Alt and select the second row of faces. In the object data properties, click on the plus icon and assign it. You can double click on it and rename it to something else. Go to edit mode in the face select mode, hold alt and click on the edge to select the full row. Press X and delete only faces. In the physics properties, click on cloth. Make sure you're on frame 0. Increase the quantity steps, enable sewing and increase the max sewing force and factor. Under collision, increase the quantity, enable self collision, decrease the distance, then press a space and realize you haven't connected the inner part. So just hold shift alt, select both edges and bridge them together. Now it should wrap up correctly, but there's a lot of empty space in the sewing part. That's because cloth can't cover the full leg and we need to make it bigger. So in the edit mode, make it bigger from each side. If it doesn't look good, you can also choose some of these pre-implemented presets for cloth. I'm gonna choose cotton. It is still falls off, so in the side view, in the edit mode, move the back plate higher and maybe closer to the body. It certainly needs more detail. So let's go to edit mode and press A to select all. Then right click and subdivide one time. It depends on the size and cloth type, so change the size and settings on your own and just test the simulation until it looks decent. Now go to sculpt mode and get the separated parts closer. In the edit mode, while on edge select mode, hold shift alt and select both sides. Then right click and bridge edge loops. Hold shift alt and select the line we just bridged. Hold click on extrude region and switch it to extrude along normals. Now grab this yellow line and drag it to the right to push the edge inside and make these stitches noticeable. You can also make it smoother by holding shift and slowly dragging across the parts where it has issues. Now let's make the shin guard. First add a plane, rotate it and in the edit mode increase the height. Add a loop cut in the middle and rotate it. Select right and left edge and push it backwards. Add loop cuts on both half and push them over the surface. Select the bottom edge and scale it down. Add a loop cut close to the top. Select the edge on top and scale it down. Then select the outer edge and extrude it to the back. Then add a subdivision modifier and change the shape in the edit mode if it's necessary. Now let's cover it with 
it sucks. Add a new plane. In the edit mode, move it to one leg. Scale it down. Switch the poly build tool. Enable snapping. And in the snapping menu, put it on face project. Then enable these options. Now move the points on the leg so they stick to the leg. Move the mouse on the top right side. And when the edge turned blue, extrude it out and continue extruding around the leg. If you have a hard time seeing the mesh, in the edit mode, go to overlay settings. Under shading, enable retopology. Now you should be able to see it easily. Just extrude one to the top, hold control, and when the corner turned blue, drag out a new face. Go around the leg again. Make sure you enable auto merge and increase the distance so the points stick together. Now just do the next row until you reach the bottom. Add a solidify modifier, then add a subdivision modifier to smooth things out. After that, add a mirror modifier so we have it on the other side. We don't need to extend the socks to the foot, cause it gets behind the shoes anyways. If you have managed to get to this stage, congrats! Now wait for the next video where we paint and make the material for this uniform, all in Blender. Until then, check out my Gumroad and Patreon page to download the 3D files and real-time process videos of making these characters. See you on the next one, peace!